Hi, my name is Katherine Brown, and this is an overview of my final project for Marketing 345, Selling with Digital Media. And our project this semester was to do three to five posts per day across six different platforms and report upon the analytics, decide upon the best content strategies, and figure out the best ways to tailor our content to each individual platform and boost the overall status and awareness of my food blog, Kate's Eats. So this is a little bit of a overview of the presentation and the project. So we're going to start off with a little bit more about Kate's Eats, my food blog, and then we're going to get into reverse engineering some great companies that served as sources of inspiration for me. After that, we're going to go over the social media schedule, some of the goals, strategies, and objectives that I set, as well as the target audience profiles I created based on everything that I learned. And from that, I'm going to show you guys examples of the posting strategies for each of the channels, which are Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest. After that, we're gonna go through all the reported analytics and then finish off with an assessment of effectiveness. So a little bit about Kate's Eats. I've invited my audience to explore a world of flavors by offering easy to follow recipes, food stories, and kitchen tips that help to ignite passion and creativity in the kitchen. My mission is to foster a community of food enthusiasts where individuals from all walks of life can come together to share their love for great food and culinary experiences. And my goal overall with these social media accounts was not only to create a brand, but to throw a flavor-packed celebration where friends and family can gather for a virtual feast, exchanging recipes, tips, and stories that help to enrich the culinary journey and health journey that we are all on. And I also just wanted to say that I chose this to do for my project because this all started off as a hobby of mine, but I wanted to explore how maybe someday I could turn this hobby into like a little bit of a side hustle. Moving on to reverse engineering. So these are some industry leading brands that were valuable sources of inspiration for me and helped to guide my content strategy and tactics throughout the project. And I was able to reverse engineer their successes online to identify really quality strategies and adapt them to suit my needs for Kate's Eats. So So Yummy stands out as one of the most viral food brands on social media with some of the highest viewership and engagement rates across all food brands. This was really a great source of inspiration for me because they create shareable and relatable content as well as share a lot of the same kind of tips that I'm focusing on, kitchen tips, recipes, that sort of thing. So I was able to draw a lot of inspiration from them to create content that resonates well with audiences on social media who are looking for cooking tips. And then moving on to Tasty. Tasty is a property of BuzzFeed. They're one of the most prominent publishers on social media, as well as the most revenue generating. And they have a really strong presence on all of their accounts. So I was able to draw a lot of inspiration from their strategies and how they maintain that. And then finally, the Food Network, one of my favorite channels for food information and education. They have almost 13 million fans on Instagram. 3.5 million followers on Instagram and have garnered almost 32 million likes, which highlight their adaptability to emerging platforms. And that's something I really wanted to draw inspiration from because you never know what platforms you're going to have to incorporate as the digital scape continues to evolve. So I wanted to make sure that I was on top of that. Moving on to my social media recipe, which outlines my goals, strategies, and objectives. So starting off with the goals, I really want to increase awareness of my brand and grow engagement across all my social media platforms, which is very obvious. It's the goal of this project. I hope to determine the most engaging content strategies so I can continue that and make uh, relevant recommendations as I move forward. I hope to increase the number of followers across all of my accounts, as well as identify the most effective platforms for Kate Seeds. And all of these um, will be done by developing consistent and engaging content strategies, such as weekly recipes, chef tips, and meal prep ideas. And I also hope to focus on developing platform-specific content and ensuring that all of my strategies are tailored directly to the platform they are being shared on and are relevant to the audiences who typically use that platform. Finally, my objectives that I've outlined are to reach at least 20 post impressions per account on a post in eight weeks to identify the three most effective platforms for the Kate Seats brand, and to reach at least 10 followers on one account in eight weeks. And finally, to determine the two most effective content strategies overall. And I deemed all of these pretty reachable for my goals, and I actually was able to reach a couple of them, which we will discuss later. Moving into target audiences, after all of the research I was able to do, as well as the reverse engineering, I was able to develop these audience profiles. Starting off with a postgrad, this is somebody who's fresh out of college, living on their own, needs tips about nutrition and cooking and health and all of that stuff. 
moving on to the busy moms. These are people who are looking for quick recipes, quick tips, way to prep throughout the week, and also uh, time-saving solutions. And finally, the foodies. Uh, these people just have a passion for food, and they love to use social media to share unique parts of food culture. These are all uh, people who are going to be relevant to my target audience and will allow me to tailor my content and engagement strategies to meet their needs and preferences uh, by recognizing their different characteristics and motivations. So this is my social media scheduling spice rack. This has been instrumental in managing my content, but I think it's also important to address the challenges that I've had um, in order to fix these issues as I move forward and explore potential solutions. So the software that I experimented with was Meta, and I attempted to use this for managing my content across various platforms, which I thought was okay. It has an intuitive interface, and I thought that the scheduling capabilities were okay, but I did experience some issues. I also had some issues linking my accounts, as well as just some overall difficulties using the platform. I don't know if it was a technical issue on my end or something, but I didn't really have the most success with it. Along with that, I also encountered some challenges. Maintaining a consistent schedule was something that was a little bit uh, difficult for me personally. So that's something that I really need to focus on as I continue this. And with that, some recommendations that I made are to experiment with scheduling platforms as you start to launch and decide which one works best for you. Also to give in-app scheduling tools a try because I had a lot more luck with those. And creating content templates in advance really helped me streamline my process. So going into some posting examples, these are some examples of the posts I did for Kate's Eats for Facebook. Um, my strategies were recipe challenges, kitchen tips, quizzes, meal inspiration, as well as healthy living tips. And my tone and tactics for this specific platform were much more casual and conversational so that people would be encouraged to participate. I really enjoyed how I could easily share outside links. And oftentimes I used a more professional and relatable tone, just more informative posts. But I found that visually appealing graphics and eye-catching messaging worked best here. Moving on to LinkedIn, these are some examples of the posts I shared on LinkedIn throughout the project. My strategies were to highlight healthy eating benefits for stressed professionals and focus more on a corporate world, as well as time-saving tips for people who have a busy schedule and ways to improve your life in a fast-paced world. So for this channel, I had to use a much more professional and particular tone and vocabulary in my messaging. I had to use a lot more long-form copy, and I didn't always have to rely on visuals to relay my message, which was nice. And all of my messaging was, like I said, geared more towards professionals who needed trustworthy and valuable information. And oftentimes, I was able to use quick copy in my visuals and more long copy in my captions. Looking now at Twitter, these are some examples of my Twitter posts. My strategies were to use short copy to reference my other accounts, often use eye-catching visuals, use hashtags often with keywords, and as well as sharing links to outside resources. So Twitter was much more casual, quick, and educational in its tone and tactics, and I really used it primarily for short-form copy and easy-to-understand visuals that didn't require a lot of explaining. So I would use this account to reference towards my other accounts where you would maybe find something a bit more explained in detail. Moving on to Instagram, these are some posting examples. Uh, my strategies were similar to Facebook. I did recipe challenges. I added foodie pics because I thought that would be more casual and successful for this account. I did some informative graphics and I also used a lot of uh, keyword hashtags. My messaging was a balance of informative and casual depending on the kind of post I was doing, whether it be a graphic or a foodie pic. And I wanted to really see which strategy worked better on Instagram and if one was more effective than the other. Moving on to YouTube, I really engaged in a lot of YouTube shorts. This was really helpful for me, and I was able to share other viral videos, which got a lot of attention to my account quick. I also used a lot of hashtags and short video titles on this, and I found that longer descriptions on my videos tended to get more views. And for this messaging, it was much more casual than the other apps since I was using YouTube shorts. Instead of videos, I was able to share the knowledge faster and give credit to the original creators easily. So finally, Pinterest. These are some examples, and my strategies were to use more eye-catching visuals to share recipes, to share tips and tricks, as well as links to outside articles, longer descriptions, and use of boards to organize information. My messaging for this account was much more informative and educational in nature because a lot of people use Pinterest as a resource for tips and tricks rather than entertainment, so I wanted my messaging to be clear, concise, and helpful. 
Moving on to some analysis. So for Facebook, the objective was to increase and grow engagement, and we did not reach this goal. I didn't see any growth in activity on Facebook, and I didn't find that it was an effective platform for our audiences to be active on. You can see right here on the top that my top performing post only had two impressions, reached one person, and engaged with one person. So this is not successful at all. Moving on to LinkedIn, uh, the objective was to determine the best content strategies and to reach those 20 post impressions, which we did reach this goal. I got more than 15 impressions on at least four plus posts, and I found that LinkedIn performed uh, surprisingly well than what I had expected. Moving on to Twitter, we wanted to also determine these engaging content strategies and I was able to reach this goal and I really found that quick visuals were the most effective content strategy for Twitter. You can see that here with my highest impression post being right here, these two. And then moving on to Instagram, the objective of course was to grow engagement and to reach at least 10 followers on one of our accounts, which I was able to reach that goal as well. We gained 44 followers over three weeks and were able to see an increased rate of likes and comments across our posts. Finishing up with YouTube and Pinterest, we also wanted to grow engagement and get those 20 post impressions, which I did reach on YouTube because I had a viral video, which you can see up there in the top. It had 548 views, 19 likes, and I actually gained five subscribers from it. So I found that YouTube shorts were an effective content strategy for more viral marketing, and I think that this is a really great thing to continue using. Pinterest, I also found that we were able to reach our goals, which were to grow engagement and determine content strategies, as well as to reach those 20 impressions. And you can see that I was able to get 130 monthly views over the week that we did it, as well as five followers. And I found that I was getting 138 impressions over the five days that I posted for. So I found that visually engaging Pinterest posts were the most effective content strategy and worked the best for this project. To finish up, here's my overall assessment and recommendation of the platforms. The highest performing platforms were Pinterest, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and my lowest performing channels were Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, which are all based on the analysis that I just gave you. I think that Pinterest, Instagram, and LinkedIn really had the target audience members on it, and they were more active, whereas YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook were much less reliable and less effective. My best strategies were informative infographics, references to outside links and articles, as well as sharing visually appealing photos and videos of food. I also found that the use of hashtags was a really great strategy for sharing keywords. And then my least effective strategies were trying to create audience challenges, doing long form copy on more short form sites such as Twitter and Instagram. And I also found that posting YouTube videos did not perform as well as posting YouTube shorts. So that is finishing up my project. Um, and throughout this, I was able to gain valuable insights into the dynamics and various platforms needed to produce quality content strategies. And I was able to identify the strengths and weaknesses of my approach and create some recommendations that will allow me to refine these strategies and improve my effectiveness. So I really hope you enjoyed and thank you for listening.